All praises be to the Most High. I'm Elder Rikosh, y'all, along with Elder Loya with our weekly Sabbath lesson. How are you doing, brothers and sisters? I hope you all are blessed. Obviously, there was a uh, snowstorm on this side, on the East Coast. And hey, if that doesn't humble you to understand the power of the Most High, well, he can take some little flakes. Little small water and turn them into crystals. Only for them to fall. Coming out of, I tell you, in the Bible, it comes to gates. Little flakes that couldn't do anything but melt once it touched the skin, the skin of a man. But when it comes together, it can shut down a region. If that doesn't humble us. I don't know what can. All right, we have our weekly Sabbath. Again, I would like to say shalom to all the brothers and sisters throughout the four corners of the earth. I pray that the Most High is present in, in your lives and, and is protecting your children through these times. And as you can see, we have a serious topic today for this Sabbath. Now, before... I go into the topic, why is God allowing this? Man. <laughs> why is God allowing this? Before I go into that, I just need to make a few announcements, okay? First of all, again, I'd like to thank you all for being here for us. And uh, we're here for you on this Sabbath your pen and pad together hey we're going to be going into some, some stuff today uh but before we go there let me make an announcement you can always go to historytimes.org we're taking enrollments now and these classes are greater than any theologian school or any place you can go to learn about god or the bible and it doesn't matter your education level it doesn't matter whether or not you sought to be a Bible teacher, because the Bible was meant to do what? To teach a standard. It wasn't meant that only a few people should know the Bible to teach everyone else. Everyone should know the word of God and the doctrine uh, it has, the strong content on how to instruct their families to understand the true narrative of the Bible. OK, the, the fall of a nation with that prophetic rising of a people as we see today. All right. We all should understand the Bible at the minimum. From its historical value. OK, to us, it's historical value to us because we're the same people, the God of Israel saved out of Egypt. We're those same people. And that same narrative has taken place again. Okay, so one thing I like about the Hebrew and Bible Academy, it doesn't matter uh, what level of education, what you sought out to do, or believe it or not, it'll answer many questions brothers and sisters have, has always had concerning the Bible and God. Personal questions. To give a logical reason to the world we're in today, because without the knowledge of God and not being able to make sense of this world, that could drive people mad. A lot of people have gone crazy because they don't realize why God is allowing this. <laughs> OK, but the Hebrew and Bible Academy will actually give you the proper perspective to how the world is in the condition it, 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 it's in today. And um, and I made sure now, folks, theologian seminary and all these things, <laughs> it costs. OK, a lot of to get the books and all these things, the Catholic Church and the apologetics makes hands out of hands over fists and finances. From our people in the ghettos, setting up churches, having to go to them to learn the correct well, what they would teach. Or, or claim is the correct exegesis of the Bible. They're liars. 
Our people pay all this money to go to a theologian school, to come in a neighborhood, come into our communities, only to push the lies that continue to erode or destroy our communities. The proof of that, we have a church on almost every corner of our neighborhoods. And it isn't getting better. It has gotten exponentially worse. So at least with the Hebrew and Bible Academy from the beginning, we had to make sure we kept the academy at a price our people can afford. $50 a month. <laughs> okay. That's about a dollar and some change a day for three months. All right. So I made sure that even though it costs to do it, administration and everything else uh, and what we do to put this together, I made sure that since the first day we did the academy, it never went up on price, regardless of how much it cost us on this end. OK, I'm keeping it at the same rate. Doesn't matter how much knowledge and how many more books we get and how much more the most I expounds. We'll keep it at that price, knowing the conditions of our people. But it pales in comparison to what our people pay, the theologians, that destructive doctrine called modern day Christianity to come in and only to erode our communities uh, even worse. OK, so you can go to HistoryTimes.org. And as you see, we have brand new in-depth lessons on finding the Ark of the Covenant. I know a lot of you have seen Raiders of the Lost Ark and don't understand the history behind the Ark of the Covenant, but it's a machine. It's a heavenly machine that once these empires fall, that will be presented by our God back to us. this this holy machine okay this clean weapon that if any nation attempt to come against us automatically the heavens work the angels work with this ark of the covenant to destroy our enemies go into war without losing one man without losing one man in war once the most high revealed this back to us and it was prophesied that he would give this back to us in the wilderness and I'm going to be talking about that. The gates of hell. When souls leave the body, exactly where, what's the destination? Where do they go? Okay, you're going to find there's gates that lead into the earth at birth. And there's an exit point. That the same spirits God sent. He has an exit point with an angel that guides us into habitations we're going to be talking about that the visible and the invisible the interaction between the celestial the interactions the interactions with the celestial and us how it's intertwined we're in a world believing we are alone believing that you know all things are relative and which is here and we disappear without any knowledge of everyday interaction with the spiritual world. I'm talking about angels. I'm going to be talking about that.
Willie. When I break down the gates of hell portals, a matter of fact, NASA, NASA in 2012 found all the entry and exit points of the earth called gates of portals. This is science. Hidden magnetic portals around earth presented by science at NASA. A favorite theme of science fiction is the portal an extraordinary opening in space or time that connects travelers to distant realms. A good portal is a shortcut, a guide, a door into the unknown. If only they actually existed. It turns out that they do, sort of. And a NASA-funded researcher at the University of Iowa has figured out how to find them. We call them X-points, or electron diffusion regions, explains plasma physicist Jack Scudder of the University of Iowa. They're places where the magnetic field of Earth connects to the magnetic field of the Sun, creating an uninterrupted path leading from our own planet to the Sun's atmosphere 93 million miles away. Observations by NASA's Themis spacecraft and Europe's cluster probes suggest that these magnetic portals open and close dozens of times each day. Now, why are they looking for portals in the Earth? Hey, that will be discussed when we drop in the Hebrew and Bible Academy, tracing the saints, tracing the serpent seed. We're gonna also talk about Israel's tribulation in the wilderness, which is a powerful lesson, plus more in-depth lessons on marriage and family. Can it survive? You don't wanna miss that, okay? Now I'm gonna be there regardless, right? I'm teaching, Elder Lawyer is gonna be there, he's gonna do what he does. Uh, uh, with the uh, Hebrew and whatever, and he does a great job with introducing that to us, as well as Shapat coming in during the news segment, one of the best informative news segments you can find on earth, where we'll take a regular news article and let you know the, the sinister plot behind most of what they tell you. No news is reported by chance. It's to progress an agenda against mankind and we're going to talk about that and more in the academy with Shapat uh in our news okay so if this interests you if you if you're interested in it keep in mind it's fifty dollars a month it breaks down to 150 but we made it where it's two small payments at the same price 75 75 to get in and it's 75 uh, at the second month, in a third month, it's all covered, okay? 75 entry, 75 the second month, and you're covered for the third month. You can just sit back and just get the information. It's quite that simple, okay? So I hope to see you in the Hebrew and Bible Academy. One other thing I wanted to announce real quick is that our calendar pre-order is up for the Gathering of Christ Church. You go to gatheringofchristchurch.org and you can order your GOCC 2022 Hebrew calendar. And this theme is the Ten Commandments. The theme on this one is the Ten Commandments, as you can see. Okay. As you can see. All right. Uh, so if this interests you to get the right times according to the holy days of the Bible, you go to gatheringofchrist.org. You'll see pre-order for calendars. Click on that and get yours. It's absolutely outstanding. All right. So. So, Elder Lawyer. <laughs> yes, sir. Shalom. How are you, Elder Lawyer? 
I'm well. I'm well. Yourself? I'm blessed by the best. Now, here we go. And his name is Ahaya, Elder Lawyer. You see the topic we have in store for the brothers and sisters throughout the earth today. Why is God allowing this? Yes, right? sir. And that's a question that normally when we begin to grow, seek to find ourselves, that's asked for those who believe in God. That quest to understand him, right? Let's go to that scripture, Elder Lawyer, I create evil. Right? Let's get that real quick. Right? Yes, sir. Because what happens, Isaiah 45, real quick, whole Isaiah 45. What happens is once we're past that childhood stage, there's a quest to find purpose. And usually that 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 purpose for our lives is rooted in the core beliefs growing up throughout church, knowing that there is a God. So if there's a God, he has a purpose for me. And we go throughout life to try to find that purpose. But some people are confused or altogether get, get discouraged. Why? Because they witness how immoral people can be and how evil the earth has become, have become. So that confuses people. If God has a purpose for me in this world, why does he make it so hard? I'm a good person. I want to do what I need to do. And here it is. Look at our neighborhoods. What God would allow this? Look at our people struggling opposed to other races of people. What God, and I, and I touched on this a couple of weeks ago, but now this is like a continuation from last Saturday. Why is he allowing this? Well, those answers and more will be answered in this particular lesson. And it turns brothers and sisters numb. They become numb. They become uh, complacent. They become, like the Bible says, reprobates, believing that uh, there is no God. Look at the earth. Why is God allowing the wickedness? Elder Lawyer, let's go now. Yes, sir. I need you to read Isaiah 45 and 7. Isaiah 45, verse 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Now, understand that there's a creator, okay? An intelligence beyond intelligence above everything. Whom most people call God. Now, he created the celestial. Now, not going into this in more detail, tracing the serpent seed. But in a nutshell, he created all the, of, of the celestial, which are angels. And keep in mind, brothers and sisters. In him creating the angels. He also created in heaven free will. Mm -hmm. A plan. Free will starting with the angels all the way to the degree in where the earth would be made. Now, through this process of creating the angels who would have free will, even to come against him. There was a grand design that would actually have man go through a process of time that would do what? Try him like gold or try her like gold where she would come out with all the experiences of time. Perfect. He or she would come out perfect in preparation 
for the world, the most high intended for us. Okay. What happens when you just give a child something without work, without effort? They tend not to appreciate it. So he created all of these dynamics to show those who really claim they love him worthy. Understand what I'm telling you here. He created it all. Even the bad stuff that would happen. He knew Lucifer would turn against him. <laughs> but that bad element had to be created. So that his children on earth, us, our people would choose good over evil. And through that choosing. Be worthy of what he has for us. What would he have on the back end of this? Now, unfortunate for us, folks, our people, our people, those who believe in God, Israelites and Gentiles. Fortunate for us, we're at the end of it. We're close. But there's an unfortunate part of this. The closer we get to salvation, the closer we get to what he had prepared for us from the beginning, the tougher things will become. We're in a trial. We're being tried. It's making it past that time. What time? I'm going to talk about it. Get your Bibles together. So understand the most high made it all. Even the disobedient that would fall and disobey him to create all this chaos we see in earth. But he had a plan. He's letting the evil operate for a time. And, and above all, he's also watching the patience of the righteous. Who claimed that they believed in me? Who said that they loved and believed in me in the past? Whose faith has waned? They claim they love me and they have turned their back on me. Who are those? <laughs> right? So. The Bible says, as in the days of Noah, then shall the coming of the son of man be. Let's go back to the days of Noah. Why? Why is God allowing this? Do me a favor. Y'all doing a great job, but it, please, if you can, I'll, I really appreciate it. Just hit the like button if you can. Okay, real quick. All right. Elder lawyer, let's go. Genesis six. Why is God doing this? Why is he allowing wickedness? Why? Why is he allowing innocent children, folks, to be preyed upon in these hospitals when they're born and assailed and all that to try to put solutions and all that in people? Why is he allowing this crackpot science to destroy mankind? You're going to find out. You're going to know today. First and foremost, in heaven, there was a standard. And brothers and sisters. The most high gave the whole earth a standard. So that this world, so that people at the end of it could not blame him. The evil is there. But he gave us free will to choose good or the evil present. But, be, but understand, the standard was always there. The standard, and I'm going to talk about that standard in a moment. So, that, so what? That means man made a conscious choice. 
Man made a conscious choice. And then at the end of the conscious choice, making mistake after mistake against God, we're praying that he comes together in the back end and fix all what we broke consciously and then say, well, what's going on with the world? What's going on with God? <laughs> when he set a standard for us to follow, a standard people consciously broke. And then at the end of the day, he's the blame. And we're going to talk about that standard so no one is, is without excuse today. We're going to discuss that standard. Elder Lawyer, let's go, to, let's go to the beginning because I have to go here because this is where God, this is where the Most High God, Ahia is his name. This is where he decided before the flood to destroy the earth. This is where it is. And Christ said, as in the days of Noah, then shall the coming of the son of man be. To go back to Noah's time to understand when evil is at this, at, at the height to the, to the degree where the evil is destroying humanity in incontrollable numbers, it's time. So, the, so, so God gave us what? He gave us a time stamp. That time stamp is how long he will allow what we're seeing to go on until those who taught mankind the evil are judged. Man didn't create the evil. Man followed the evil. The fallen, Lucifer, Satan, demons, principalities that control this earth and have set up Babylonian governments. Man are like children. All of creation. Let me tell you, anything that you see that progressed our civilization came from the fallen ones. And they'll say, well, this inventor, Tesla did this. Uh, uh, Benjamin Franklin did that. No, folks. Every part of all technology since the beginning was given to mankind. Theories about the presence and landmarks of extraterrestrial life have been circulating for ages, but with a series of tweets, SpaceX and Tesla CEO Elon Musk added a theory of his own to the ring, one that linked alien existence to that of Egypt's most famous landmarks. In July of 2020, in a late-night Twitter session, Musk tweeted that obviously pyramids were built by aliens, and his tweet had over half a million likes and it got more than 85,000 retweets within two hours. It gained so much traction that even Minister of International Cooperation from Egypt, Al Mashat, responded to this tweet, where she denied this claim of Musk and invited him to come to Egypt for a personal excursion. Additionally, Zahi Hawass, an archaeologist from Egypt who was amongst the team to discover the pyramid builders' tombs, reacted to these words of Elon Musk with a video, where he said that basically Musk was hallucinating and aliens had nothing to do with how pyramids were built. In response to this whole situation, Elon posted an article of BBC, where it is explained how those people who built pyramids lived in Egypt. Elon commented that this article was very sensible and maybe it was proof that aliens didn't build the pyramids. Though this seemed to be a much more plausible explanation for the creation of such otherworldly feats, it is likely less exciting for those interested in the supernatural side of things. So what exactly are the most exciting pyramid theories out there? And is there any substance to them? Let's take a look. Perhaps it's best to start with what Elon Musk was initially claiming, that the pyramids were built by extraterrestrial beings during a visit to Earth. Though these theories vary in exact details, they have been around for decades. 
Mainstream historians will tell you that the Great Pyramid of Giza was a glorified tomb for the Egyptian pharaohs. The only monument left of the original Seven Wonders of the World, this structure was created with impeccable mathematical precision and is a unique, mysterious feat of construction and of engineering. There's only one problem. The Great Pyramid has none of the characteristics of tombs including extravagant artifacts, ornate wall art, sealed entrances, elaborate coffins, or even mummies themselves. It was, however, built with unique materials, the same materials that are used today for electrical conductivity. These facts are leading more and more historians to believe the pyramids may have had a far more useful purpose. The Pyramid of Giza was not at all a tomb but a power plant, generating and transmitting electricity to the civilization surrounding it. Impossible? Join the universe inside you for a closer look. At the 1893 World's Fair, Tesla transmitted electricity naturally to a light bulb he held in his hands, and he created the Tesla coil, which is used more today for show than for the function it was intended to serve. Most importantly, we know that Tesla claimed adamantly that he had perfected the method of harnessing and transmitting free wireless energy using the electromagnetic nature of the planet. In a patent Tesla filed in September of 1897, he claimed that at 30,000 feet altitude, there's a stratum of rarefied air that would conduct electric currents at high voltages. In this proposed system was a transmitter which would transmit millions of volts into the atmosphere. Then he had something receive the electricity and reduce the voltage to a convenient potential to be used by consumers. In an experiment the last week of July in 1903, nearby residents claimed to have witnessed Tesla successfully conduct his experiment at the Warden Seif Tower, while Tesla himself, sharing his new method of conductivity, said that it lit up the night sky as if it were a giant fluorescent tube. It's even been said that he successfully wirelessly transmitted pictures and sounds. Though all of his work has been mercilessly destroyed, this cannot be proven. Sadly, Tesla's technology was confiscated shortly after his death. He died in poverty and the U.S. government destroyed his tower, claiming it was being used by German spies. Had Tesla succeeded in his mission, the distribution of power on this planet would have been very different today. Compare Tesla's technology to the pyramids, the location, height, and electromagnetic materials. We've seen induction between copper wires work for short distances. For a long distance transfer, the same principle can be applied when acoustic energy is converted to kinetic energy and the frequencies match the way an opera singer can shatter a glass when the sound wave he is singing matches the resonant frequency of the glass. So if there's a magnetically oscillating current and you create a second possessing the same frequency, the wireless transmission can pass through solid materials and through long distances. The frequency which would have been released from the pyramid would have to have been matched in the surrounding area. Perhaps this would explain the obelisks the tall monuments which could be acting as receivers, particularly if there's a quartz stone at the top of them. This would also explain the ancient carvings in Egypt, which so clearly indicate light sources, it's boggling to think anyone would even argue it. In the Hathor Temple, the Dendera light is one such image. It perfectly resembles modern electrical technology, showing a wire inside of a bulb-like area and a box which appears to be a receiver. Across from this carving is a similar image, but the system appears to be falling into the hands of a reptilian-looking being, as though it's a warning of the potential to abuse this technology. Mainstream historians scoff and make more primitive conclusions, but still, the pyramids show no sign of soot from flame torches. Instead, there are multiple carvings which show these antenna-like objects that appear to be a transmitter, near another object shaped like the famous symbol, the Ankh, which appears to be the receiver. 
given all this, it seems so much more believable that the Great Pyramid functioned using the same principles and conditions as Tesla sought to demonstrate, that they conducted and directed electromagnetic energy into the ionosphere, where it generated and transmitted electricity wirelessly to receivers within the civilization. We've long believed that the pyramids were just tombs, but this theory raises more questions than it answers. Why do they have nothing in common with other tombs? Why the unique construction materials made to build it, including the very materials required for conducting power? Why the oversized granite boxes proven to have never contained any mummies? Or the ones that are clearly too large for humans? Why the alignment with the North Pole, the 20-ton swivel doors, intricate tunnels and chambers, shafts, and areas still yet to be discovered? Why is there no soot from fire torches anywhere inside the structure? And why do the tunnels protrude deep into the earth? These mysteries still elude our understanding. But more and more people are accepting the possibility that the Great Pyramid of Giza had a more important function than we understand. We know there is a heightened electromagnetic measurement around the pyramid that's equivalent to that made in an electrical storm. We also know that if you look at them from space, you can see that they're actually eight-sided, not four-sided, and that there are strange heat spots observable only with special equipment. They have unique electric materials, including copper, and a design that suggests high pressure and water power. They have a powerful magnetic structure and placement over the telluric currents. They're aligned with the stars, and the unique art of the area shows clear depictions of wired light sources. All these things suggest there's a lot more to this story than we've been told. All these circumstances make the likelihood high that the pyramid was created to be a compact energy generator and a broadcasting system that transmitted electricity wirelessly. The implications for this understanding of electrical power by an ancient culture is huge. It would rewrite history as we know it. Do you think that free energy could be transmitted wirelessly around the world? And whether or not you do believe that, do you think that if it really could do that, we would actually know about it? Steve Jobs didn't create Apple. Okay. I touched on that in the Academy to show you where Steve Jobs went. It is not who you were at birth. Where he matters. went in but India do, to sit with the shaman who the would open up death, gates to give him information. It's but a journey to serenity, to its completion. Okay. So the more technology, the more access we get to freedom, the worse mankind becomes. To a degree where the Most High will say at one point, it's time. And at that time, the angels will enter this realm all at once. Every eye shall see. Elder lawyer, let's get let's get Genesis six and four. Let's read it. Yes, sir. Genesis chapter six, verse four. There were giants in the earth in those days. Before, let's go to let's, let's go to six and one. Six and one. Yes. Uh, Genesis six and one. <clears throat> and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. They took them wives of all that they chose. This is talking about the celestial. It's not talking about people on earth. The Catholic Church try to cover the truth of, of, of the evil that came into the earth by claiming that this is the sons of which is Seth, why Dilly or Marion, the daughters of revenge. Cain. Well, that's a lie because there was no law against that. There's no law against the sons and sons uh, uh, of Seth dealing with the daughters of Cain. 
So they try to hide the fact that these were beings that came into the earth and caused chaos. These are the same gods the Catholic Church till this day burn candles to. The old gods before the flood are who the Catholics truly serve. They're not saints. They're spirits. The spirits that gives them ingenuity, technology, and insight on how to oppose God's people in the earth or to oppress us knowing that we were born to judge them. So there's two sides. Those who were born to go through the trials and be made like pure gold to see things for what it is to be a judge at the end of this. And those who would choose the technology and the ingenuity and the imagination that was taught before the flood by fallen gods. And they would actually take that side against us. When I started dealing with ritually abused individuals, then we dealt with military oriented, highly trained, you know, programmed shooters and assassins inside of them. When we began to deal with them, I dealt with someone from Fort Bragg for quite a while and a few others. We were sitting in a lake, Conneaut Lake. They reached over and ripped open my shirt to see if I was wired, if I was wiring and recording them. And they were the most sophisticated, satanic warrior type person. They knew five, six languages. They knew the ancient twilight languages. They knew how to conjure. They knew, they knew how to use Belteshari, Okwam, all these old Pictish languages of the Druids to summon. They were, they are the real Luciferian. They've been through many human sacrificial things. So they sat there to tell me some of those things, what they've been involved with, how they sacrifice a human. I'm listening to all this stuff from them. And then they said to me, you have no idea, Russ, how many of us there are out there. How many satanic, cho they, they use the term, chosen ones. Uh, you have no idea how many, you have no idea what's coming. Um, we smell Christian blood. We, we are waiting for our day. And when the call is given, millions of us will be released. And they looked at me and said, you believe in revivals and you believe in Pentecost and the power of God. You believe in all that. We believe in the Black Awakening, a multi-continental release of power to activate the program demonized, where they've weaponized the demonic powers to these super soldiers. I know this sounds like something out of some far sci-fi, but no, that's what it is, folks. So when we see the struggle that our people are going through, we cannot see it like this earth would like us to experience it or see it and be depressed and, oh, woe is me, why everyone else? Nah, this experience is given us the power to judge, to understand the struggle, to understand what, to understand <laughs> what it is to live in substandard scenarios and see everything mm -hmm. from a vantage point that most could never understand. Why do you think the most have taken us through all these trials and tribulations as a people generation as, as a generation, because that's the experience we'll need at the end of this, not only to help others out of it, but to judge those who caused it. Mm -hmm. But to judge those who caused it. Finish reading elder lawyer. If you don't mind. Yes, sir. Jim. Genesis chapter six, verse three. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he is also flesh, yet his days shall be in 120 years. Now, this is the piece that confused people to make people believe it's talking about man going rogue, man bad. He's going to lower the days of, of, of mankind's life expectancy. Nah, this is not what that's talking about. This is talking about years of Jubilees. 
It's talking about a judgment on those who taught mankind evil. And through that evil, it led to all types of chaos to a degree where the Most High had to flood the earth. They began to make dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus rexes. They began to make giant animals to feed the giants or Nephilim that came from the celestial and whom they would deem mortals. I mean, this is not just a Bible narrative. You can find this in secular or other Gentile history. I mean, the Epic of Gilgamesh speaks of this from the Nephilims or the giants viewpoint. Technology comes with what? A trade-off. And I'm going to talk about that. How it's no different today. But when it says his his day will be 120 20 years it's not talking about life expectancy there's people even after that who lived past 120 years that's talking about 120 jubilees from the time mankind had a choice between good and evil A 120 jubilees a jubilee according to the Bible is 50 seven Sabbaths and then the extra day like the Passover you got the Passover you count seven Sabbaths you're in first fruits 50 okay you had seven seven Sabbaths before we went into the Holy Land and then Moses went to Mount Horeb to see the land and we crossed in over Jordan into Israel, brothers and sisters, on the 50th year. A generation is 50. So you take that 120, you multiply that by 50, and that give you a time stamp the Most High have given before the judgment that mankind must do what? Go through life and understand their purpose according to God with a standard. 120 times 50 is 6,000 years. It took that amount of time from the beginning of creation, the beginning of time being created because the Most High is not subjected to it. The heavenly realm isn't subjected to our time. They come into our time once they what? come through the gates into this earth the heavenly realm and when we die and when we're in the spiritual realm the spiritual realm is not subjected to our time and space time was meant for a judgment it was meant for what an appointment so we're talking about 6,000 years because it took 6,000 before man was made and had that choice. He would have rested if Adam and Eve would have partook of that tree of life. But because he chose the tree of good and evil, and we're gonna show you who introduced that choice, he still, those spirits are still giving mankind choices today. At the, I'm gonna tell you right now, at the end of that 6,000, it would take, don't forget, because Adam partook of the tree of good and evil and not the tree of life, it would have to take another 6,000 years for man to be made as God intended. Now, this is the man that's worthy for what? The tree of life, the kingdom to come. So our life experiences and or choices like Adam and Eve determine whether or not an individual is worthy of that reward but then it comes down to do you really believe do you believe in God because you can't say you believe in him and not find your purpose in him Okay. 
You, you, can, you can feel and try to tell others. But no one really truly believe in God unless they find a purpose in him. That's when he become real in your life. That's when you understand the power that works on the outside of you. <laughs> I guess that's a true meaning of a true relationship with God. So, Elder Lawyer, stand, yes, sir. Let's. I don't know if you want to say anything on that. Are you good or? No, sir. All right, great. Let's go to standard because the most high would, he's not going to judge someone. He's n he will never judge a person without first. And I'm talking about the con the consequential side of things, consequences without people understanding there's a standard. Now, let me make it clear. The earth will not last. Babylon will not last because they have gone off from the standard. The balance, the balances have been tilted to evil without any pushback from those who believe in God. I'm going to tell you, it, it was, I'm going to tell you, folks, it was at one time, folks. It was at one time that there was more good people and those who fear God than bad. So when, 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 when people started to follow the ways of evil and tilted the balance, and tilted the balance to evil. That's when the most high say it speed up the time. It's time to speed it up because they don't understand that they're on a suicidal trajectory. And if I don't give them less time than, than what was given, they, they, they would kill themselves. And I'm not going to allow these people who are making conscious choices against me to kill my righteous that are left for me. I'm not going to allow it. And that's why Christ said, what? In Matthew 24, when you go down to 13 through 22, it says, if he didn't cut that time sh short, that 6,000 years, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. People are on a suicidal trajectory and they don't care who die in its wake. And that's where we are with this inoculation and what's going on in the earth. Everyone is talking about what the government is talking about, the cold, uh, whether or not you have a disease. And no one is talking about God's hand in any of this. He's allowing people. Who, who, who don't know him, who decided consciously to walk away from him, he allowed the, he's allowing them to operate and kill each other. Standard. Let's go, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. Uh, Genesis 6 and 4. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare to them children, and the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Men of renown, giants, Nephilim. Anasazi were an ancient people that flourished in the Four Corners region of the United States for thousands of years. 
until something drove them into the cliffs of the canyons and they disappeared. The official story says that the Anasazi simply migrated out of the region because of drought. But the fortresses they built in the cliffs before their sudden disappearance suggest something much more gruesome may have happened. Legend records that giants devoured them all. Our third generation medicine man made the point that if we would have asked his grandfather why they would have gone through such Herculean efforts to move all this debris, right? They had to bring all of this from way down in the valley up here to build this edifice. It was because a portal opened, a doorway, and the giants came up out of the earth. And around the same time that Moses is on the other side of the world writing in, there were giants in the earth in those days. So it was a testament that they were trying to build something here to defend themselves from uh, against something that was incredible, astonishing. The traditional narrative concerning the Anasazi is that over a long period of time, nine years, they gradually migrated away from this area because of drought. The problem is you don't build a fortified position with towers to defend yourself from drought. But what we're finding here and what we see evident in the ruins is a sudden disappearance. This was a people group that was in a very defensive position. They were in a defensive mode. They were faring for their lives, defending themselves against some kind of an external threat. Well, another thing, that official narrative that they slowly migrated out of the area over a nine-year period of time, the reason that doesn't work is because when the first archaeologists came in here, they found these rooms packed with salt, with uh, weapons, with the little boards that they carried their babies around on. These are not things you would have left behind if you slowly migrated out of the area. They were literally gone overnight. And even the archaeological evidence from different digs around here is they could never account. The anthropologists had a hard time figuring why the brutality, right. the brutality associated with the disappearance of the Anasazi. It's almost like they were eaten on the run. The news is coming out that the evidence that the archaeologists first were basing some wrong conclusions on has now been set aside. This was the violent overthrow yes. of the Anasazi. We had the rare opportunity of meeting with a third generation medicine man by the name of Dr. Don Mose, who is an academic in the Navajo Nation. And I asked him specifically, what happened with the Anasazi, these legendary pre-Pueblo Indians that lived around Mesa Verde and Chaco Canyon, but they seemed to disappear literally overnight. And so Dr. Mose begins telling us the story that is the sanitized version that you might even hear from some of the state parks department guides about how there was an extended um, drought. And so they slowly migrated out of the Four Corners area of the United States and later on became the Hopi, the Zuni, other uh, Pueblo Indians of today. But when I challenged that and said, well, why then, if they slowly migrated out of the Four Corners area, did they leave behind everything that would have been important to them? And when I ask him that question, he looks right into the camera and he says, well, I should not tell you this, but if you would have asked my great-grandfather, here's the story that he would have told. And then he begins telling this epic, if you will, of a time before time when doorways in the Four Corners area of the United States opened and giants came up from out of the earth and began persecuting and cannibalizing the Anasazi and the Anasazi fled for their lives. And this was the first great clue that we had, that if we went back to the original stories of the Pueblo Indians, we would receive an entirely different narrative that involved the arrival of this reptilian being that deceived the Anasazi, that taught them how to use their kivas for pharmacia, 
what Dr. Mose called sorcery. And in those kivas that were excavated around Chaco Canyon, artifacts were found that indicated ritual cannibalism had started among the Anasaze. Teeth bones, finger bones, found inside their kivas, which Dr. Mose said was a kind of witchcraft that led the Anasaze to opening these doorways of the earth through which the giants came. This is part of Chaco Canyon. Um, everybody today, the experts all say that this was probably the capital of the Anosaze. And also, you know, it's, what I found interesting was how some of our uh, Indian guides and members of the tribes, they also refer to this as the Babylon of the Anasaze history. Right. Very mysterious stuff was going on here and part of that we might assume was happening inside these kivas. Now we just learned that there were more than 40 of these very very large kivas. These are some of the largest kivas I've ever seen. What is a kiva? The kivas were religious edifices. Some of the tribes would only allow the men to go in them and it was in there that they did rituals, they did prayers, they put themselves into contact with um, other dimensional entities, the Kachinas. Inside the Kiva is a doorway called the Sipapu. It's a mystical doorway that can be opened if the rituals are performed correctly. Dr. Don Mose told us that story of the, of the portal opening in the Four Corners area. This reptilian being comes through. But key to this, he said they start, this thing started teaching the, uh, the natives when they went into their kivas to practice sorcery, to practice witchcraft, right? And that was when he said through the Sipapu, through the holy doorways that are in the kivas, maybe a mystical doorway opened. But suddenly these very terrifying entities, these beings, including the giants, emerged onto the earth and began cannibalizing, destroying. In the petroglyphs, even right here in Chaco Canyon, are the giant six toed uh, footprints and six fingered fingerprints at a place called San Canyon Pueblo, not far from here. Evidence of violence, of, of, of people being torn literally from limb to limb, children, women. None of this uh, matches tribal warfare uh, the way that we would have understood it. This was something entirely different that happened here. Uh, but in those kivas, they found strange artifacts. In each of the kivas, one finger from the hand, three teeth from the mouth. It was sorcery. It was black magic, we would call it, right? And it evidently did open a doorway. So according to ancient Navajo tradition, the Anasazi people opened some kind of a portal and unleashed something dark and sinister on the earth, possibly yeah. in this very location. I would not say that it's Navajo tradition. Uh, what I would say is that some of their medicine men would admit that that is actually what happened here. Giants are found in the myths and legends of many different cultures. Their appearance rarely differs much from an ordinary human. For example, the Cyclops in the Odyssey, written by Homer, besides being a giant, was generally human-looking, except for that one big eye in the center of his forehead. The Bible mentions in passing a divine origin for ancient giants, and in Scandinavian legends, giants actually confront the gods. Quote, at that time, there were giants on the earth. Since the sons of God began to enter the daughters of men and began to give birth to them, they are strong, anciently glorious people. End quote. Why did people on different continents and in such disparate civilizations have such similar stories about giants? Is it possible that these are remnants of memories of certain ancient civilizations? A medieval Danish historian, wonderfully named Saxo Grammaticus, assumed that the giants really existed, else how to explain the giant-sized buildings and structures of antiquity. Many written sources of those years do speak of such things. For example, in the old English poem Seafarer, a tale is told of enormous stone walls supposedly built by giants. 
There is also mention of giant beings in a number of historical documents. Herodotus writes of the Spartans acquiring the bones of the warrior Orestes to help with a military campaign. The skeleton is noted to have had a height of seven cubits, that's 11 and a half feet or three and a half meters in modern terms. The ancient Greek scholar Pausanias described how a skeleton of a man of about 18 feet or five and a half meters tall was found on the bottom of a river. Josephus Flavius, a Roman historian, transcribed the testimonies of eyewitnesses who saw live giants themselves. These observers reported that the giants' faces were different from ordinary human faces and that the towering creatures possessed thundering voices. A number of 13-foot-tall skeletons, that's 4 meters for you metric aficionados, were excavated in the Caucasus Mountains during the 20th century. The presence of such a large number of skeletal remains allowed scientists to assume that the giants moved here in search of salvation after some global catastrophe. Here they found their final shelter and resting place. In one very old book entitled History and Antiquity, now stored at the Oxford University Library, there is an account of the discovery in the Middle Ages of a giant skeleton in Cumberland. Quote, the giant is buried in the ground at a depth of four yards and is in full military garb. His sword and battle axe are resting next to him. The length of the skeleton is four and a half yards and the teeth of the big man are measured at six and a half inches long and two broad." End quote. Adding to the evidence verifying the existence of giants are numerous gigantic fossilized footprints. For example, an imprint of a human foot 80 centimeters or 2.5 feet in length has been unearthed in Tanzania. A series of handprints was found next to traces of dinosaurs near a village in Turkmenistan. The height of the giant that left them is estimated at about 5 meters, almost 16.5 feet. A human tooth five times larger than an ordinary man's tooth was found in Hong Kong in 1935. A 60-centimeter or two-foot-high human skull with two rows of teeth was found in Alaska in 1950. And a 50-foot-long petrified human skeleton, that's 15 meters, folks, was found in Mongolia in 1999. The sheer plethora of evidence allows us to state unequivocally that giants did indeed once exist. But whether they were a single people who settled all over the Earth or belong to different races, this is a question which scientists have yet to unambiguously answer. But if giants really existed, and not only in myth and legend, then it stands to reason that other traces of their lives should also exist. For example, architectural structures and other such objects. In the opinion of a number of scientists, the numerous megalithic objects that have been discovered all over the Earth serve as proof of the prior existence of giants. Even in our time, with modern technology, it is extremely difficult to build such monumental objects. Without some kind of mechanical lifting mechanisms, it seems that it would have been virtually impossible. And yet, they exist. This is the famous Baalbek Terrace located in Lebanon near Beirut. Three huge stone slabs, each weighing about 800 tons, are embedded in its base. The plates are identical and fit together so seamlessly that one cannot even insert the blade of a knife between them. Researchers calculated that to install just one such stone block, 21 meters wide and 54 meters long, would require the simultaneous effort of at least 35,000 people. Who, how, and why did they do it? Handwritten Arabic treatises say that the structure was built as a temple of Jupiter and that the giant beings built it on the orders of King Nimrod just after the flood. The ancient city of Teotihuacan, the city of gods, is located 31 miles from Mexico City and is an entire complex of huge stone blocks. According to the most common historical version of events, the city was built by giants to turn people into gods. Its layout resembles a model of the solar system, from the central temple which embodies the sun. Regarding objects that giants might have built, scholars also include the Egyptian Sphinx, the English Stonehenge, the stone figures of Easter Island, and the Tibetan City of the Gods. 
Not only are these structures themselves amazing, but also their geometrical connection with each other. For example, a line drawn from the Tibetan city of gods to the Egyptian sphinx, if continued, leads directly to Easter Island. And another line from the city of gods through the Mexican pyramids also goes to Easter Island. These two lines delineate one-fourth of the Earth's surface, and a line drawn from the city of the gods to Stonehenge divides this quarter exactly in half. And what about modern people who are giants? One view is that the life and then disappearance of these giants is related to some cataclysm. After the disaster, the size of the giants gradually decreased. The Asuras, inhabitants of the legendary continent of Lemuria, reached a height of 50 meters or 160 feet. As a result of the catastrophe, the continent divided, and the once united race of giants were now isolated from each other. The successors of the Asuras were 18 meters tall, that's about 60 feet, and their successors 6 meters or about 20 feet tall. As a result of these new environmental conditions in the world, the giants in many areas died out. But in some areas they managed to survive. Of course, such a theory runs counter to the teachings of Darwin. But it is this theory that most plausibly explains the existence of the giants. What do you think? Folks, these are not people. There was no place in the earth for these particular beings. So once they died off, once they die, their spirits must roam in the earth before judgment. And what are those spirits today? What do we call those spirits? Demons. What we're talking about is the origin of demons that attack mankind. That's where demons come from. show up it's a sure sign that carnage and bloodshed are not far behind Morning. they don't cause it they feed on it the more boat acts that show up the bigger the eventual feast they're attracted to evil like bees to flowers they know when death is coming and want to watch they don't show up for any ordinary death they want extreme operatic violence and terror But they, but just like people, brothers and sisters, when the Most High says, put on the full armor of God. Now, is it physical armor he's talking about? Faith? Hope and all the other things he talks about, the love factor? And have our breastplates? This is what, what he's talking about is what? Armor for war. Not physical armor to let you know, folks, that the unseen seeks ways into you, invisible ways into you. But the access for these demons to get through is usually sin. Sin or, or a confession publicly telling them that they are allowed to utilize you. Now, witches and warlocks just say it straight out. They do all types of things and, and bring things into their presence. And with that agreement, their life will begin to change. Figured out life's too short. 
Where to stay the course Cherish every moment I ain't got time to waste no more Salvation on the way Thank God he's full of grace Chaos up on the news Trying to find peace where I stay I ain't trying to be up on the scene I know my family needed me If it's a shoulder you can lean Expect that you can count on me And I just count straight on God My powers and my faith in him Look my child in the eyes He blessed me with a gem All I can do is smile Through faith and no straight. Seek to be content Most times you gotta wait Your turn just swerve on the hate Be great, just shake them fakes Elevate my escape with the fam Get land, escape, just praise Give thanks, just dance through the race Give praise, we safe Every day I give thanks Every day I just praise No God can make a way Even if we make mistakes This a natural high How it feels to be alive Lifting up Christ It's time to seek the light Yeah Falling under pressure, baby And faith, I'm changing my standards. I'm planning on Christ, can't do no damage. And rambling about that cross, he handled it. I'd have been through heartbreaks, just gambling. Watch them demons that you channeling. So many pools that you pedal down. Homie, got a peep game. Who you travel with? Best friends cross my back more than a few times. Had a gun pointed at me more than two times. I'd have been jumped with no one at my side. In front of Walmart on a late night slide, that feeling on them just slide on me. Shopping gets they had their eyes on me. Staking out, plan on taking out. Knew my license plate and put that iron on me. Choices, we gotta make one. Choose life or death. It's on you only Heaven and earth for our witness The angels help when you roaming Heard a voice that this is the way Walk you in it, don't go astray Choose life so my seat can live Now we back on his Sabbath day Had to separate from the crowd I'm in College kid with an NPC I was up at 5 a.m. Either reading or making beats Writing raps for my testimony I was fighting not to overthink Couldn't trust so I walked alone Searching for the light, now it's Christ I see Falling under pressure, baby That was Christ I see But we blessed to see another day